Hey data fans, Reed here. I'm actually extra excited today to share with you a technique to incorporate adjustable upper and lower bounds for KPIs, either represented as circles on the line or as bands behind the chart. Now this is a great way to add more insight to the line chart and to help identify trends in the data. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So to start with, I'm going to go ahead and show you what the result looks like on a couple of different pages. On this first page, what I've done is I've actually created conditional formatting icons or dots, basically, that are on the lines here that will then actually either fill in or disappear depending on my low or high range. And what this is, is this high range is simply saying, show me a dot on the line um, overall, that's anything that is 70% or higher from the max versus the min. So basically, whatever that total range is. So as you see, if I drag this to say 80%, the, uh, the dots start to slowly disappear a little bit. And you know, if I increase that even higher, then you get just a couple of dots at the top. Vice versa, if I drag it down to 50%, same thing that happens with the low range. That is 30% above the absolute lowest value, which in this case, this one, or I could drop that down to 15%. And you can see that I basically create the bands and I can adjust them. Now I initially just created this version, but then I also realized I'd like to be able to see the bands themselves to also better represent what the ranges are being adjusted to with any of these high or low range slicers that are actually created with the what if slicers. So again, what I'll come down to the bottom and go to the adjustable upper and lower bands page here. And now you'll see that I actually have two lines representing where those ranges are. So as I increase this, you'll see that the line changes to basically be above or below where those dots should be appearing to give a better representation of that. And continuously, just as I was building this out, I kind of thought to myself, I would also like these to be filled in in some way. So the final result that I came up with is really this last tab that I have down here where I actually have the color filled in to show where those bands are. And again, that will change as I adjust either the upper or lower ranges. And now you've kind of seen three different scenarios where these can be applied and the functionality of it, really starting just from the icons to having a line on the page to then really having the filled areas to have a color represented range on it. So now what I'm gonna do is show you really how I built this piece by piece. Let's come back to the first page and let's talk about the slices that we have at the top first and foremost. If I select the low range here, what you'll notice this is coming from a table called low range. That is a DAX calculated table. I have one for low range. I have one for high range. And I added this by coming to modeling and selecting new parameter. And all this is in here is a what if scenario where I basically set the range. In this case, for the low and high range, the low one was from zero to, and make sure I set that to a decimal number, zero to 0.5. There we go and then an increment of 1%. So basically I can use the slicer to then adjust the low or high ranges based off of a percentage that will also be then harvested in a measure that I'll show you in a minute. So that's how I created the two slices that are on the page. So let me close out of here. And the what if scenario, what it does is it creates a table with that range for you as a column and then it creates a measure that basically will then just grab whatever that value is. The goal of this video is not to walk you through what if scenarios, but just a quick recap of kind of what they do. Now, the important thing in here is the conditional format that is on this line chart visual. Now, line charts natively do not support conditional formatting. If I come to the Format Painter and I go over to Data Colors, we will notice that there's actually no option to apply conditional formatting. The trick for this that I've done in many presentations and other videos is you start from a other type of visual, in this case, a clustered line chart, and then you can see that there is conditional formatting applied in here. And when you convert it to the line chart, then the conditional formatting becomes inherited and it shows up as lines and dots at the top. One of the disadvantages is that you can't really customize the size or shape of these, so I can't change them from circle to a triangle or anything else, or just the size, but the thing I do have control over is just the color. So coming back over to clustered line chart, and what we'll do is I will show you that there is a measure in here called high low KPI colors that is actually providing the logic. So I'm gonna close out of this, I'm gonna come up to my DAX measures, and I'm gonna open up the conditional format one that I have for high-low KPI colors. Let me go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit for you so you can read it a bit better. And there's a few different things that I've done in here. Um, I ended up basically just creating the ranges and needing to figure out what they were and determining whether or not things should be colored in or not. So I'll step through this piece by piece. And if you have any suggestions, honestly, of a different way to do this, I'm welcome to hear that down in the, the comment window, but it does the job and basically gives me the effect that I need. So it works for me. First two things I've did just to make it easier to read is I just declared a couple of variables for the green and red colors there at the top. Started initially just to have my units in there, the thing that I will be calculating the min and max of, and I calculated my metric max and my metric min using a max x function. Basically, it is just looking across all of the values here on the axis for month and year and just seeing whatever the max four units are and whatever the min is. 
I'm also able to calculate the range as well, just by simply minusing the two of them together. And then to know for that range, how each single count from the min to the max is across that, what is the percentage of that? I'm dividing that by one to be able to get the range as a percent so I can know kind of how to do an additional calculation from there. And then from here, at any given point, I want to know how far am I from the minimum? So whatever my actual unit is, in this case, this would be any of these columns here, how much higher is that from the actual min? Is it equal to it or is it five or 10? And then I take that and I multiply that by a range as a percent. So that actually will then basically convert it into, okay, so what this is now as any given value, let's assume this is 38% uh, from the maximum or 38% away from the minimum. So that's how I'm able to basically do the conversion into that and then, I just do a switch true statement, take that percentage of range, and if it's greater than or equal to my high range value, basically whatever that percent ceiling is, then it gets the green KPI color, and same thing with the low range value for red. So that's how it's able to convert percentages in here into understanding what that number should be on the line itself, and then how those are able to adjust whenever I move these around. Go ahead and put this back in the line chart. There we are. Now, like I said, I wasn't fully satisfied with just having the dots on the actual line. I wanted some bands to better represent what that was doing. So let's go ahead and show you step two to then sh show you another way that I've kind of upgraded or enhanced this. Coming down to here, adjustable upper and lower bands. Now, what I'm now gonna do is gonna go up to view and go to my selection pane. There we are. And in here, what you'll actually notice is that I have a group where there's two visuals in here. I have the units and forecast. So if I actually hide that, you'll notice that there is another visual behind this. That actually just has my high and low lines in here. And then what I've done is I basically used uh, white text color for the background and everything else to kind of get rid of everything except for the lines on this. This is actually the exact same chart as this one. The reason I needed a separate chart is if I tried to add the high and low constant line that are in here to this initial one, it ends up also inheriting, if I put this in here, all of those extra KPI um, dots that are on the line. And, as much as I've tried, I could not figure out any way to incorporate DAX logic to get them to not show up on that. So the only way that I was able to find to create either on the primary or secondary axis lines that were just clean lines to show the bounds was to basically copy and paste this. This top one on here, by the way, has no background on it. So the background is turned off, which means this is transparent. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and just show you if I can get this and move, you see that it's just sitting on top with the other thing kind of showing through it. And because they're the exact same chart, that's how they're able to have the same axes and everything else. So they stay in alignment in that sense. So it's not perfect, but it does work. And as far as I've been able to test with slices and anything else, there hasn't been much of an issue with any kind of annoyances popping up outside of the one downside is you, when you expand, with focus mode, you will not actually be able to get those lines in there. It will focus mode just to the line and not the constant lines in there. So one small drawback with that. But let me go ahead and hide this here. And in this, the high and low lines that are in there, what that actually is, if I select this, open up the DAX window, and similar to the other one, rather than calculating the percentage that it needs to be, I'm really creating the actual number that needs to be calculated to be shown on the line. So I'm taking that range percent as a number, whatever that is, multiplying that by the high range value, which is the percentage that's on the number. But I actually need that to be in whole numbers, not just simply an actual decimal percentage. So if I have 78% on the slider, this will actually become 78. And that's plus the metric min as well, because it needs to start greater than zero. So that basically becomes whatever that line needs to be in relationship to the percentage. So rather than being 78%, it's the actual number of say 110 as an example where that line should be. And then that just basically goes consistent across all of the categories. And I've done very similar to the low constant line as well, where it's just taking the low range value plus the metric min, and that's becoming that line that you see down here. And a few things that are just done in the format pane over here, most of the labels and everything else I keep on because I need it to be the same size and shape, but what I've done for almost all of the colors is I've just set it to white. If I actually put this back to say black, you'll see that it does show up, but I just wanna make sure that there's no double showing of that where the text can become blurry or anything else. So I just convert all of that to white and just minimize this chart to only being the lines that are in the back, just to show the grid lines, plus the actual KPL lines that I've just made a much softer color in the data color section, and then turn the shapes over here. You can see if I go to high constant line, you can notice that the line style is dotted, just to make it a little bit 
cleaner and uh, less noticeable in the background, but still adding that additional value. There we are. With that on top to be able to see what those bands are as you adjust these. If I move that around, there you go. Now there's one last thing that I want to show you. And again, we start to dive into some really interesting ways and things that I've done with the DAX to get this stuff to work, but it was a fun way to figure out some layered visuals. So let me show you the last technique that I did to make the bands themselves. All right, coming down here to the bottom, adjustable lower and upper bands filled. So similar effect, but now they're fully filled in. Now the problem with this one is to get it to also be a white color in the middle, plus still having the green and the red on the bottom. So I tried really hard to figure out how to do this with the standard line chart, and I couldn't figure out any easy way to get that to be accomplished using the high and low constant lines. When I put the actual numbers in there, even though the numbers on the axis would still equal, stacked together, the equivalent of this top one, the scaling on the axis when automatic continued to adjust so the bands weren't aligning anymore. So what I did instead, if I come over here and hide the top one and go ahead and look at this bottom one again, you'll notice what I'm using is a stacked area chart. And I have three values in there, low, mid, and high. The low range value is actually just the percentage. Whatever percentage I select as say 33%, the mid, if I select that over here, that's actually just the high minus the low because they need to stack. And the selected total of all three of these needs to equal always just one or 100%. So they have to be able to have any combination of the two of them. So as I adjust my high range minus my low range, that will continuously just tell me what that middle range percentage should be. And I stack all of them together and I go over to the format painter and I make sure for the Y axis because I want it to always scale appropriately. I started at zero, ended at one. So it's completely scaled to show just 100% range in here. And then at that point, there's a little bit of tweaking that I did to make sure that the two axes aligned with each other. So I made the top and the bottom perfectly match with the top and the bottom of that chart. So even though they're showing separate numbers, the ranges will always match up because even though these are showing dots on actual numbers, it's still a percentage range that's determining that. Therefore, that percentage area chart in the back will basically still be able to work and stay aligned. And you can see even as I adjust this up just little by little, it does do a pretty good job of keeping that perfect alignment when it comes to making sure that should that dot show or not based on whether or not that line is above or below it. So it takes a bit of tweaking, but it works for relatively well and gives a good looking output. Now I might explore Charticulator or some other apps at some point to figure out if I can make a single custom visual that does this. But for now, I think it's a pretty good technique and it's a really unique way to see how you can layer some visuals and create some really cool bounds and lines either as KPI dots or some bands in the background. Thank you so much for watching, and please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. If this is your first time to my channel, or you want to see more of these awesome videos, smash that subscribe and notification button. And last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog pals page using the link down below.